Best Served Cold is a standalone fantasy story about revenge. Uh, it takes place in a land of feuding city-states, blighted by years of war, corruption and greed, which makes it the perfect place for a dark and twisted writer like me to write about, uh, but also for my dark and twisted main character, Monza Mercato, the Snake of Talons, to make her living because uh, she's become the most feared and famous mercenary of the age. A little too feared and famous, in fact, for the taste of her employer, uh, Grand Duke Corso of Talens, who's become worried that she's going to try and steal his throne, as mercenaries sometimes do. She's betrayed and left for dead, but not the woman to forget about a debt. She sets out to wreak vengeance on him and six of his henchmen with very, very bloody and occasionally grimly hilarious consequences, whatever the costs. Seven men must die. I'm a video editor by trade, and I think I've always been as influenced by film and TV as I am by literature. So in uh, looking for some inspiration for my fourth book, I thought about some of my favourite films and about what inspired me about those films. Uh, one that really stood out for me was Point Blank, the John Borman film with Lee Marvin. For anyone who's unfamiliar, uh, it's a hard-edged revenge story with an implacable hero and a few sharp twists in the tail. Uh, so pausing to swap the implacable anti-hero for the anti-heroine, um, I took that as the starting point for plot. I'd always been fascinated by 15th and 16th century Italy, of the Renaissance, of Machiavelli, of dark politics and feuding city-states, and so I took that as the cue for uh, setting. Um, I think it'd be fair to say that Best Serve Cold really does hit the female Lee Marvin Machiavellian revenge story market right in the bullseye. From Hamlet to The Count of Monte Cristo uh, to Payback, I think audiences have always been fascinated by revenge. Uh, there's a shape and a structure and a symmetry to those stories that appeals. They begin with a wrong, they end with a reckoning, and you know there's going to be a dark and dangerous journey in between. I think, uh, perhaps especially in these economic times, people can really relate to those feelings of rage and helplessness and hatred that drive revenge stories along. Uh, they've probably got all those things that brought Romans flocking to the Colosseum. Uh, emotions at their darkest and most intense, the very highest of stakes, and uh, it hardly needs to be said, an awful lot of blood. My previous books, The First Law, were really my twisted take, if you will, on the classic epic fantasy trilogy. Uh, Best Served Cold is a little bit different. You could say it exists on the untamed frontier between epic fantasy and hard-boiled thriller, but I think anyone who liked the trilogy will find plenty to like here. Uh, it's set in the same world a few years on. Uh, it picks up a few plot threads left dangling at the end of the first law, and it features some lesser characters in much more central roles. After writing a series, I wanted to try my hand at uh, a standalone self-contained book that could be read on its own, uh, that could be read before the trilogy as a kind of introduction or could be read after it as, as an extension, a kind of development of the big picture of the world, if you like. Um, so Best Served Cold is a much tighter, shorter, faster, more focused story, if you like, than the first law was, but I think it has the same virtues of vivid characterisation, and sharp dialogue of moral ambiguity or indeed on occasion the total lack of morality of any kind uh, with a lot of white knuckle action and a few bow loosening surprises along the way all shot through with a rich vein of dark humour. What's not to like?